The XO Pure Off 5 is finally here and with it comes a few features that are sure to excite a lot of photographers. We've got an updated interface and we've got a few new denoising options including the new Deep Prime 3 which promises better noise reduction than ever before seen. So in this video we're going to walk through everything that's new, I'm going to show you all the cool features, talk about who the software is for and then I've also got a discount code down below for those of you guys that are going to pick up this software so you can get a little bit of a discount. Let's go ahead first and dive right in there. So I've already loaded my images in. Um, I've just loaded a few here. Now this software is meant to be used on raw files and raw files only. So typically this is gonna be like the first step for your edits, whether you're editing in DxO Photo Lab or not. Like I edit in Lightroom, I don't use Photo Lab. So for me, you know, I'm just loading these images in when I have an image that maybe needs a little bit more image correction, which is all of these images here. So I've loaded them in. You can of course load them in one at a time. I simply just drag and drop the raw file. From here, I would save the image back in the Lightroom and then do my editing there. So let's look at this image first. Um, and you don't want to double click unless you want to preview it. But if you actually want to edit it, you want to go to process with preview. Now you can see we've got a brand new interface over here, which is different compared to um, DxO Pure Raw 4. Let's just zoom in here so we can get a better idea of what it's doing to our photo. You can see as I slide the slider here, the left is before, the right is after. Let's uncheck lens distortion so our image isn't moving when we slide this now. You can see before and after. Now I haven't done anything special. I can go through and make some adjustments here, um, but as of right now, I haven't done anything special. As we go down, you can see we have some options. We've got Deep Prime 3, we have Deep Prime XD 2S slash XD, and then we have Deep Prime XD 3X Trans. Now this is just for people with an X Trans sensor. Um, at this point in time, that's on Fujifilm cameras, specific Fujifilm cameras, which I don't have, so we're not gonna be showing that feature. I know most of you guys looking at this don't have that as well. I'm sure there'll be other people that make more in-depth videos on just this feature. This is new, but again, you're not able to use it unless you are harnessing an X-Trans sensor on a Fujifilm camera. But D Prime 3 is brand new. This is what you're going to probably want to use because it usually is going to offer you the best noise reduction. So you can adjust the luminance and the force details. Um, these are kind of technical terms. The way I would put it to someone who maybe doesn't understand, luminance is basically is just more or less noise reduction. Force details is like the sharpening slider, more or less. It, it kind of adds more details, makes it sharper. So when I zoom in here, you can see if I do more luminance, I get rid of more noise. Now these sliders do not work in super aggressively. They are pretty tame when you adjust them, but you can see if I go from like a zero, this is at zero. So it's doing no noise reduction. You can see it's still reducing some of this color noise in here, um, but it's not doing any other noise reduction. So 40 is usually a good place to be, but if you're finding there's a really heavy Im noise in your images, you can slide that further. Now we also have force details, which if we drop it all away, you can see our moose loses a lot of detail here. It's like kind of losing sharpness. Slide it all the way and the moose is gaining sharpness. Now you might think, why wouldn't you want it at 100? Well, this does add a little bit of noise into the image. You can see it kind of up in here. So you wanna find a nice spot where you don't add noise, but you keep in a decent amount of detail. Somewhere like that. Now you can also play around with some of the settings down here for lens sharpness optimization. If you wanted it to be sharper, you know, you could do hard, 200% opacity. These options here just adjust the intensity, so you can simply just adjust this yourself. This is like another way to add some sharpening. Of course, these two do a little bit different things, but more or less, they're both just adding to the sharpening. And then, of course, this does vignetting, chromatic aberration, and lens distortion. It does it all, all these profile corrections all into one. Then you simply hit process now. Then you'll let this thing process out. You can show the cue. You can see this is working. It takes, you know, it said two minutes, but it processed in probably about 10 seconds. So you can export it too. Then I would export this back into my Lightroom and work on it from there. Now let's talk about some other features that you have here. Um, so when I zoom in to this wolf here, let's say, you know, we want to kind of sharpen this, um, not a wolf, a coyote. We'll sharpen this coyote, but maybe we don't want to kind of denoise the snow behind it. So now you actually have the ability to use local adjustments. Now I'll be honest, when I heard about this, I was really excited for local adjustments, but this is not really a very refined or good feature yet. Um, I don't think uh, that it's not worth buying because of this feature, but don't get your expectations very high. So you have the size of the brush, and then you can simply paint in here, make sure you're on regular brush, not minus. 
But the problem with this brush is there is no selection. So I could go in and paint over this animal here, but I have no way to like refine it. I mean, you could see for one image, maybe not that big of a deal for me to paint this, but if I'm doing like any batch editing, this is just takes way too much time. There needs to be some sort of selection tool to add to it, um, in my opinion. But if you do use this, you know, then you can make individual adjustments here to just something in your layer mask. You can create multiple masks, all sorts of things for local adjustments. But like I said, because it's so difficult to make the mask, I don't really think this is quite there yet. To be honest, it would be 10 times faster for me to just um, do whatever I want to do to the whole image, then bring it into Photoshop and do like a layer mask there where there's a lot better selection tools. So I'm not too hot on that. Now you also have presets. So let's say um, this could work for batch editing images, or if you know you like to use the same settings over and over again, you know, adjust the settings how you see fit, um, and then you can go ahead and just save a preset. Save current settings as new preset. Maybe I'd call this noise reduction with extreme sharpen. You can see I'm basically as sharp as I can be here as it's allowing me. Then you can just click the preset and load it out. For my style of photography, it's probably not something that I would do, but if you are batch editing, um, those presets can be really, really helpful. Now, I'm also noticing that this is working really well for nighttime images, which it has not always worked great for nighttime images. You can see I'm on Deep Prime 3, um, and not to mention, it is so fast and, and speedy now. The previews load so quickly. Of course, a lot of this depends on your computer, but I am finding this to work really well. But compared to the older, this is the Deep Prime XD2, um, that older model, there's a lot of artifacts that I'm not crazy about, and this just looks a little bit better to me. Um, and you would expect it to look better because it's Deep Prime 3, it's the newest version, it should look the most realistic. So that's nice to have for those of you that are out there shooting night photos. I know a lot of my subscribers are, um, you know, make adjustments to these as you see fit. Um, but it does work really well for night photos. Just wanted to show that really briefly. Now I want to talk about a quick limitation of this software before we get into really who this software is for. So I'll show you on this image here. This image, uh, because you can only put raw files in here, you are limited to what your raw file has. So for example, this image I shot really dark. I was trying to increase my shutter speed so that I could have the trees sharp. Now, I guess I could have just increased my ISO because my camera's ISO invariant. That's a song for another time. But um, with that being said, I wish there was just a way here in Pure Raw that I could just click a button that would just like bring up the exposure three stops. And I don't want to export it that way, but I just want to see a preview because even though this image is bright enough, I have some images that are darker and it's just hard to tell exactly how that noise reduction is going to look when you actually brighten the image because when I edit this in post, I'm going to bring it up probably one or two stops. So because you can't do that here, you just kind of have to guess and check, I guess, and you can't do any of this Deep Prime 3 after the fact. It only works on raw files. So who exactly is DxO Pure Raw 5 for? Now really, no matter what kind of photography you do, if you're shooting in harsh conditions, low light, you got to jack up your shutter speed to get something that's moving, you know, sports, wildlife, astrophotography, landscapes, really anything where you might want to do some noise reduction, software works great. Works a lot better than Lightroom Classic's denoising option. In my opinion, it also does have a, the capability to do a little bit of sharpening as well. Now the limitations, you might be wondering, I've made a lot of videos covering Topaz Photo AI. I've done some comparisons with this to Topaz Photo AI um, over the last couple days since I've been testing this software. I think the noise reduction is on par, if not better than the current version of Topaz Photo AI. Now, the one place where you are going to have a little bit of a drawback is that Photo AI does offer you more sharpening options. Um, this Pure Off 5, if your image is out of focus, you are pretty much toast. There's not really a whole lot you can do. In Topaz Photo AI, you do have a few more options when it comes to sharpening images that are blurry to begin with. Um, and additionally, in Photo AI, you also have the upscaling option, which you don't have here in Pure Raw. Now, that being said, a lot of people don't want to fix their blurry images. A lot of people don't need the upscaling. This software is almost half the price of Photo AI. It comes in at $120. Plus, you can use that discount code that I've got down below. So it is a lot cheaper. It works very quickly. It works great with, you know, to just dump your photos into Pure Raw 
when you first load your images and then spit them out into whatever software you edit your photos in. Seamless with pretty much any editing software that you wanna use. So it's gonna work great for photographers that find themselves just needing a little bit of noise reduction. So I think it's a solid pickup for a piece of software. I'm a really big fan of the noise reduction, a really big fan of Deep Prime 3. I think it's a great addition. Um, it's a little bit more powerful, redesigned interface. All that stuff is all great. Um, like I said, I think it's a strikeout on the local adjustments, but to be honest, this isn't something that I'm gonna be doing much of anyways, even if there was better masking options. Typically, I'm looking for a noise reduction of the whole image, not just a particular local adjustment spot. So hopefully that helps you decide if this software is for you. Like I said, I highly recommend it. Think it's really nice, works great. Um, I'm a big fan and I'm really excited that it is finally here. Now, if you guys have any questions, you know where to leave them down below in the comments. I get back to everyone if I can. Happy to answer questions about this software, about any comparison, anything like that. I've done a lot of trial and error with this and testing it with other software. Um, and if you guys have tried it yourself, I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. Was there anything that I missed in this video? Anything like that. Otherwise, if you're serious about improving your photography, be sure to subscribe to my channel, posting weekly videos to help you become a better photographer. But otherwise, I think that's going to be all she wrote. My name is Austin James Jackson. Thank you guys so much for joining me. We'll see you next time.